Hi, uh, my name is Mira Harhe, and uh, I'm a nephrologist at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Uh, I did a study that I'm presenting at the ASN on the prevalence and trends of microalbuminuria among obese adults in the United States who don't have other comorbidities. Um, I'm interested in this question because we often screen patients for uh, albuminuria when they have comorbidities like diabetes or hypertension, uh, but we in the nephrology community recognize that obesity in, a, in and of itself is a risk factor for the development of proteinuria. Uh, and we need guidelines. We uh, need to understand the extent to which obese individuals without other comorbidities have albuminuria and ultimately the implications of that finding. We used the uh, National Health and uh, Nutrition Examination uh, Surveys, the NHANES surveys, uh, to understand the prevalence and trends of microalbuminuria. We identified obese individuals uh, from 2001 to 2014 who didn't have evidence of diabetes, hypertension, or uh, any evidence of reduced uh, glomerular filtration rate, and uh, look to see how many of those individuals, what proportion of those individuals, had uh, al microalbuminuria. Uh, what we found uh, was that microalbuminuria in the seemingly healthy, obese uh, population has been increasing since 2001 to 2014. Uh, now, uh, the uh, U.S. adults who are obese, so that's a BMI over 30 kilograms per meter squared, um, who don't have diabetes and hypertension, we found that among those, those types of individuals, the prevalence of microalbuminuria is probably around 8 to 9 percent. And that's similar a prevalence compared to obese individuals who do have diabetes or hypertension. Um, what was more, also more interesting, I think, is that obese individuals, morbidly obese, so BMI over 40 kilograms per meter squared, have a prevalence without diabetes or hypertension, have a prevalence of microalbuminuria of uh, over 13 percent based on the most recent data. And that, that has also been increasing. Um, we look to see what kind of risk factors might be predictive of albuminuria in these, in these patients who don't have diabetes, don't have hypertension, and we didn't find that traditional vascular risk factors like smoking, um, educational status, really were associated with albuminuria uh, for these obese patients, um, or these obese adults. So what we need are studies to understand um, basically who is at risk if you're, if you're obese uh, and you're otherwise healthy, the way that we normally measure it, who is at risk for developing microalbuminuria? And we also need to know what happens to those patients in terms of progressive kidney failure or other vascular disease.